Mom and the boys think what's happening is very funny. The dog's even laughing. And the cat is attacking. Poor dad. Hi, I'm George the Antique Nomad. Come with me as I wander the country in search of valuable vintage, amazing antiques, and cool collectibles. We'll buy, sell, and trade at antique malls, shops, and shows, estate sales, flea markets, thrift stores, anywhere people go to find really interesting things that just aren't made anymore. So come on, let's go! This booth is having a sale, and I see some interesting items. The bass mount. We see a lot of people collecting these and decorating lodges and man caves with them. This guy has got his leader and I can't see the price but he seems to be in pretty good condition but you do have to watch the tails often got damaged as this one has. Here's a neat old fresh fish and produce sign from Binghamton, New York in enamelware on Shenango Street with the E printed backwards. That seems very peculiar. Cute painting of somebody's terrier. This device here is a multimeter kit and these were used as an ohm meter and to measure voltage and other such things. It was basically from the United States Army as a field tester for tubes and such to keep the signal core going. I had to do a big signal core collection appraisal once for a couple who were divorcing and there were hundreds of various items like this in it. And there's a lot of different deviations between them. This one's only priced at $25. Just for the look, that's a pretty good deal. And then this deer mount with the hooves as racks is priced at 65 you have to be careful with these. In some states you have to have certificates that say where they came from in order to be able to sell them. Now pillowcase covers are pretty common, especially from the Second World War in the 1950s. They were things especially soldiers and sailors sent back to the family, and so we see quite a lot of them. But some of them are pretty interesting to people because of what they depict. This one is from Jacksonville, Florida for the Coast Guard, and it shows army planes on it, which means it was kind of a stock footage. There probably was an Army Air Corps logo in the middle of some of these, and there was probably another one that was U.S. Navy, I suspect. It's priced at $10 minus $2 discount. That one is common enough that I'll leave it, but this one is from Alaska. And Alaska was still a territory. There were fewer than a quarter million people there. It was not a place a lot of people went or could afford to go. And eventually, someday, I'll get back out to Washington State where I sell. And this will do well there. So for $8, I'm going to take this one. It's got some interesting things. Alaska, Land of the Midnight Sun. They make a point of having an Eskimo baby. And I believe they don't like to be called Eskimos either. It's got the totem pole. That's real. Eskimo boys carving ivory, prospecting for gold, the steamship with the glacier in the distance, and of course salmon and the dog team. So it's got a lot of good motifs and a few that are just a little bit wrong and that makes it even better. So I will take it. And then there's this old picture. This is worth a laugh. This guy is having a bad day. Mom and the boys think what's happening is very funny. The dog's even laughing. And the cat is attacking. Poor dad. Dads never get any respect. It doesn't matter if you were back in the 19 teens, which is when this print was from, or if you were on television five minutes ago. If you're dad, you're gonna get a ration. I had to shoot this because this reminds me of my dear friend Reba Schneider from Seattle, who got me interested in fiesta wear and dinner wear at the ripe young age of 16 when my mother went into her mother's mystery bookstore and I was bored. I'd hang out on her side of the shop where she sold Reba's classic ceramics. And she had lived in Hawaii and loved dressing in these 1970s Hawaiian sundresses. This one actually has the Made in Hawaii label. That's important for value. It's 
actually important that they not be homemade. Homemade can be fine, but they don't sell for as much. Somewhere in here, it says made in Hawaii on the tag. And this is priced at 25. That's about right for these these days. But it is a cute, vibrant, bright look. Whee! Just looks like fun. Well, people like to know what things sold for, and this is pretty good because we can tell you what this old camp stove sold for here. You have the little gas pots in it. It's got the three burners and the knobs to turn up the gas. They've got a nice old water cooler sitting on top of it. We'll show you the top there. There are people who buy these to use out in camps today. There's people who just like them for the look, for a display. And this one sold for $50 and is on layaway. So there you go. There's a comparable sale for you. It's very important, by the way, when you're looking at things. Look at what people are asking for things, but also try to find out what they actually sold things for because I see a lot of people who price things based on what they saw somebody asking online. Sometimes people ask way too little and sometimes they ask way too much. This piece here is a big old pottery piece that looks a lot like Nimaji pottery out of the upper Midwest which has the swirled colors in the glaze. That one does not have a mark. It's priced at 35. It's a rather large piece. Most Nimaji I see is smaller than that. So I'm not sure if it's them or another maker who did a similar wear, but there are collectors for that sort of thing. It goes well with primitives and Western Americana. Well, this certainly seems like a simple enough request. This is Japanese from the 1960s. Tacky cells, I have to say. If this is cheap, I'll probably buy it because someone in Florida will think it's funny to put out by their pool. And it's $3, so yes, I guess that has to come with me. I don't always buy refined high-style antiques, I must admit. Kitsch sells. Old sporting magazines and publications from the 50s can be of interest to people because some of them have some folks who became pretty famous later. This one has the special section, the boxing preview for 1952. And they also have a great article, Can a Cage Coach Spot the Fix? The fix is in is an expression meaning that somebody was rigging things, like the outcome of a game, for example, for gambling purposes. Cage refers to basketball. That was considered an expression for basketball in the early years. And the NBA only formed in 1948, so this is pretty early in the history of basketball as a professional sport. Ah yes, and inside Sports Stars is targeted at young men. I remember as a child I had a real body complex because of ads like this that said that you were going to be a 97 pound weakling if you didn't buy their program to bulk you up and make you into a he-man. Which one of these two weaklings only paid a few cents to become an all-around he-man? I'm betting neither of them. Here's this neat old mailbox from the 50s the Carr family had. It's priced at $37.50 with a discount, which I think is fair because it's got a really great, cool red painted dog. This thing is pretty cool. I see a lot of folk made pieces in this part of the country. They refer to this as an old hillbilly wheelchair, and in fact, I think that is basically what it is. We take for granted that you just go to Social Security and they give you stuff and take care of these things nowadays, but there was a time, this would be probably 1920s or 30s, where you had to do the best you could. Somebody took an old rush-seated chair, bent some steel, put some arms on it, built a platform, and there's your wheels, and you've got a wheelchair that you can roll around on. There's something really unique about this. There's not going to be another one exactly like this. It's priced at $45 minus 25% off, and I think I might take it because when are you ever going to see something like this again? Here's the 1950s era gas pumps. You see a lot of these made into salt and pepper shakers in a miniature plastic version. This was Gulf, and it's good Gulf. It's nice that this one's not restored, so you know it's original. 
priced at $9.50. Gas was 49 cents a gallon when it was removed from service. It's not in terrific shape, but this is a neat old hydroplane. Hydroplane racing is something I'm pretty familiar with because it was a big deal in Seattle. They have the sea fair every year, except this year in August, where the hydro races come. And a lot of people were stimulated to build their own hydroplanes using the old Cox engines from the remote control airplanes. This one's priced at about 150 and you're basically getting a good body for that price. Now the chairs aren't original, but this is a neat pattern for mica table. I like the way the corners are cut off and it's in these pinky colors that would have been popular in the early 60s. It's a very modern pattern for the time. It does have a chip that happens to the edges on Formica. It does devalue them. It can be hard to get scratches and scrapes out, although there's a product called Gel Gloss that will do that sometimes for you. It's a neat piece. We usually see Formica tables like this going in the 125 to 195 range now with patterning. They've really gone up in value. Wicker we see in furniture. I don't see wicker lamps. Hardly at all do I see a wicker lamp. This one seems to be in good shape. It's got a nice base. It's got the cloth underneath for the shade. And I would say if the finial is any indication, and it seems to be right with the cap, that that's going to date to about 1945 or 50. And looking at the base, we think it's older as well because the paint is a lot thicker on the old ones. Ooh, let's try not to break things. See the way that the paint really is heavy at the base? And we look at the bottom and it is old as well. So this really is vintage. It's in good shape. And you know, new ones of these cost $100 and this one is $60 after the discount. So I think I'm going to take this too. Doesn't match my usual look, but you know what? I'm always about trying to stretch myself into something else. Uh, but one thing you have to be careful with with wicker is to look for breaks, and there is one right there. So, unfortunately, I'm going to have to leave it. However, this space has a ton of dinnerware, and we can show you some fun patterns. This is all on sale as well. A lot of Blue Ridge here. The happy yellow flowers are among the more popular. There's a bunch of Hull Drip Glaze. That's H-U-L-L, not Hall China, but Hull Pottery from Ohio. For those of you familiar with Franciscan's Desert Rose, this is Cafe Royal done in the late 70s when the beige and earth tones were really at a peak. Same pattern, but in these colors. Here's Harker's Cameo Wear from the 1940s. They did a lot of different patterns in florals, and in the 50s they did it in bamboo. They also did the white clover version of it for Russell Wright. And I should show you down here. These are fun pieces. A lot of people really like these. This is Patio by Payton City, China of West Virginia, but there's also Homer Laughlin patterns called Mexicali and a bunch of companies did this. Payton City was a place that also was known for a very good glass company that made elegant depression glass, but this was the dinnerware, the Payton City Pottery Company. This set is $120. It's a service for five plus extra pieces. And then also by Harker Ware is this Stone China from the late 1950s. This came out in 1958 in pink, blue, and yellow. It's really durable. It can microwave. It's oven proof. I used this for years in my house. Really liked it. Here's Pebble Beach, a Franciscan pattern from about 1970 when Avocado and Harvest Gold were the king in colors. All of these patterns are collectible, and there was a real interest in pattern matching and collecting, gosh, maybe 20 or 30 years ago. So a lot of people do have sets of these assembled now. But if you see a pattern you like, the prices have come down some, and some of the patterns are really great. A lot of them are oven proof. 
met blocks here. This is dishwashable in the sculpted grape. Stangle china from New Jersey. This is the fruit and also the blueberry patterns. And then this attractive here is country gardens. That was a very popular pattern for them. Brasilia was the new planned community capital of the country of Brazil that was built in 1962. And shortly after the Broyhill Company came out with the Brasilia pattern in furniture that echoed a lot of those modernist shapes that were done in the architecture at that time. This cabinet is a really neat design. You get these oval windows so you can see into your display, but it also has this brutalist modernist aspect to it. It's a lot of fun. These pieces sell for pretty good prices now. This one is priced at 1200 or offer. And you know, they go for about that now. And then inside, we see panthers. I always think of Yvonne Thrifty Rich from Colorado when I see panthers because she loves panthers, as do I. There's a really great panther TV lamp. Let's see what the price on him is. Oh, he doesn't have the lamp. He's just a figure, but he is $34 which is about what these run for these days if they're not a TV lamp. So while I'm thinking of it, please comment in the space below here and also hit the thumbs up button to like this video. If you haven't subscribed, click the subscribe button below. Also hit the bell below to be notified of new videos coming every Monday and Wednesday at 8 p.m. Eastern. And thank you so much for following along. Let's go back to this video. I see back here where they have what they call Vintage Boutique. Let's see if we can pan out. Nope, that's as far as we can go. Vintage Boutique has a lot of bridal gowns. And a whole bunch of vintage. It looks like various vintages, 1960s through 80s. Let's take a look at this here because this looks like something from the early 80s preppy stage in history. I don't know if anyone remembers how preppy was in in 1982. They started going back to wearing the early 1950s plaids that Abercrombie and Fitch and some of those companies had put out and there was the preppy handbook about how to be just so. A lot of the preppies grew up to be yuppies and a lot of the yuppies grew up to be incarcerated for various crimes relating to the financial industry in the late 1980s. This jacket here is cute because it's tufted. This is a 1970s look, of course, with the oranges, but the black kind of sombers it a little bit in a way that makes it a little more versatile now. You can see where they've paired it with the black under layer there. Then you see these very schmaltzy sequin numbers that were popular in the late 80s and early 90s. A 60s blue party dress. So this is fun. They also have a bin full of 1970s vintage that's priced at $2 a piece. For me, I have to admit I'm more interested in vintage accessories. I kind of like this green bag with the fringe on it. That looks like a tropical thing from Florida days. But it is made in China and I don't buy made in China. Now I have to say this mall has redeemed itself because there are a lot of vintage things and cool stuff and it's big and it's got good variety, but I still am seeing way too many reproductions like this entire wall of brand new signs. And the problem with this is that people who sell old signs can't compete on price. People who don't know better get taken, then they don't want to come back and buy things because they thought they were buying old and the dealers who have the genuine old stuff can't sell it because they can't compete, so the old stuff leaves the market. It's a real problem, honestly. I know we have other McCoy collectors out there, so I wanted to show one more pattern from the 50s and 60s that you might not recognize as McCoy, and that is this one with the spattered pink. That is called brocade, and that is a spattered glaze that was done deliberately with that relief on a background that was unglazed, and that gives it that texture and it is priced at 60. I have to say, I think that's a little 
rich for that piece, but it's sitting in the yellow bird bowl priced at 68. There's also this, which is the pointer. You don't see that planter very often. You're more likely to see this bulky guy there with the cart behind him. And then another piece of occupied Japan is this hanging tropical bird. And I wanted to show that because I wanted to dispel any myth that occupied Japan figurines are just little cutesy courting couples. There's a ton of things that were made with the occupied Japan mark. Sets of China, anything made in Japan between 1947 and 52 for export had to be marked that way. So it could be anything from fine Noritake China all the way down to kitschy little penny figurines. Here's a case with some neat three-dimensional icons that we don't see too much. These are generally made in Italy. They're ceramic. You can tell from the old frames these are going to date to the early 1900s. This one is the Holy Rosary with the Madonna. And then in the bottom, the Five Joyful Mysteries. And that's a rolling chart so you could study the Five Joyful Mysteries while you prayed the rosary. This one also has a rolling device that shows the joyful mysteries. And then these are portable altars. Sometimes they were used for last rites, but they were used for any number of home uses as well. Blessed be thy holy name. And the one on the right is the more complete one with the Last Supper. Inside you would find the items needed for the rituals and the candles that went in the candle holders. These are all priced between $100 and $200 each. If you're old enough to remember playing with these or young enough to remember the Toy Story movies, you'll of course remember Mr. Potato Head. Well, there were other things that went with it. Hasbro presents Katie the Carrot and Cookie the Cucumber. So you could use all sorts of kitchen products and vegetables to make interesting little faces. And you can tell this is early 60s because he's driving on US Highway 1, which is now pretty much covered up by Interstate 95. Those are pretty cool and they're not that easy to find. They're probably harder to find than Mr. Potato Head. And uh, he's got good prices on them, only about $25 per. I personally really like dinnerware. Reba, who I mentioned earlier, got me interested in all this stuff when I was first getting into the business. There's Dixie Dogwood. I have to thank her for a lot of my knowledge in this category. Here's Harlequin. I showed some pieces of Harlequin in a recent video from Consignment World in Cadiz, Kentucky. That was made for Woolworths by the same people who made Fiesta. Boutonniere is a pattern that was inexpensive in its day and is cute and fun to collect now. This is from the 1960s by Taylor Smith Taylor. There were a lot of dinnerware companies in this country. Now there's basically Homer Lachlan. Here is another kind of fruit. This is Della Robia, also by the Metlocks Company out of California. You can see the big stylish coffee pot there. It's nice to see some genuine old militaria in a store. The U.S. Army pouch on the right should date to around the time of the Spanish-American or First World Wars. They've actually got a bunch of stuff here. They've got the First World War victory medals and some of the Second World War. This medal on the right is Masonic, but that's quite grand and seems like a good price considering that Masonic items are pretty collectible again. There's a Civil War button in the box. We're very close to where the Battle of Chickamauga was held. So there's a lot of interest in Civil War related items here. And if we can get off the glare, we're very close to where the Battle of Chickamauga was. The button on the right is from Charleston. And then we've got a tin type in the middle. That is a genuine one probably posed about 20 years after the war. There was a real interest in posing in your old Civil War regalia about 20 years later when tintypes became popular. 
and easily affordable. Here's the old style German army tanks and that's a neat set of brass buttons priced at $197 for the set of four. A pith helmet from the U.S. Marine Corps, Second World War. Bayonets from various places around the world. You see a lot of Czech bayonets. There were a bunch that were sent over there and reissued. The second one up here though is a U.S. Navy Mark II. That's one we see fairly frequently. Although you don't really see a lot of them out in the wild anymore like you did even 10 or 20 years ago. And then this helmet here marks toys, but this is the fighting squadron. This is if you were a kid during the Second World War and you wanted a military helmet. This is what Mark's toys put out for you. Speaking of Chickamauga, these are purported to be Officer's Eagle Buckle and button from the Chickamauga area. These apparently were found in digs done near the battle sites. Next to it we have a 58 caliber Springfield cartridge from the Civil War and a Maynard carbine. Civil War memorabilia is very collectible in these parts. These dominoes date back to that era as well and it's a complete set of 28 made of ebony bone and brass. That's something neat to see. Those are priced at $235. I know we've got a Domino's fan in my viewership who is doing a lot of study and going to do a deep dive with Patrick on Trusty Huckster Mercantile about Domino's. So if you want to learn more about Domino's, which I do, that's a great place to find information. And of course, after wars, we have baby booms. And the Second World War especially produced a baby boom, and a lot of little baby boomers were nursed on bottles like these. Look at all the different screen printed designs. This little pig went to market. There's Hansel and Gretel. This little pig stayed home. Saving for the future, Mary had a little lamb. This one said it's a little sweetheart drink. You've got a mama bear. Really cute collection. And these are priced in the $20 to $25 range primarily. Then this helmet obviously is Nazi from the Second World War. These are confiscation items that were brought over by our GIs at the end of the war as trophies. Here's the aviator glasses that were issued. These look like they're probably from about the Korean War era. And then there's a bunch of long rifles for sale. The second one says that it's a Harper's Ferry issue. A little hard to show these because they're so tall. But they said this is a 60 caliber dated 1848, a Model 42. Harper's Ferry, of course, was where John Brown's Rebellion was. And that was a big event that presaged the Civil War. Here's an 1858 canteen. One of the problems with the Civil War and one of the reasons it was so bloody and lasted so long is both sides had been trained exactly the same way by exactly the same playbook. So when the war started, both sides thought they knew more than each other, but it turned out they knew exactly the same things, same tactics and so there were no surprises except for the gigantic casualty count. Here's an early ammunition holder. Here's a neat thing that shows you a good variety of World War II collar brasses with all the information. And then we've got a neat old Spanish-American War vintage holster and just a lot of good militaria here. Metlocks also made this ivy pattern about the same time that Franciscan was doing the sculpted dinnerware. Metlocks was doing this where they painted the ivies on. That was a popular pattern. I have a friend in Tacoma, Washington, who has a large collection of this. They did a lot of oddball pieces like vases and Dutch shoes and little giftwares as well that go along with this. I always like square dishes. And I like the handle on this. This is red wing pottery 
Yes, the ones who made the Crocs. They did a lot of dinnerware, including some great modernist patterns. This is the fruit pattern from about 1950. This is a great 70s pattern, Sundance by Franciscan. So for you thrifters, when you're going through the thrift stores, spend a little bit of time with dinnerware. There are some neat old American dinnerware pieces, especially serving pieces are still saleable. This early 1960s Ford truck hauler with all the cars on it, it's in perfect shape. It's got the Montgomery Ward's Riverside mark on it, on the box. And it is one that I haven't seen before. I have to say it's in impeccable condition. It looks like it was never played with, even though the box is a little beaten. And I just wanted to show this because this is from the late 60s, early 70s, but you don't see it anymore. This is Donald Duck with Huey, Dewey, and Louie. And it is plastic, but a lot of these were thrown away as soon as the kid grew up. And so this one is priced at 200. They are actually pretty scarce, especially in the larger size. Well, I've got to say that in the end, that was a lot of fun and I got to discover a new place. I found a few things. I got a couple of deer heads on mounts. I got a really cool mailbox with a dog on it. The Deruda jar came with me, the Alaskan pillowcase cover, and hmm, yes, the very classy pool ashtray. So I'm on the way to Florida, got the rest of the trip to go, and I'll see you from down there. Thanks for joining me. Bye for now. This is George the Antique Nomad on Periscope, Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook, and here on YouTube Mondays and Wednesdays. See you soon. Bye-bye. Thanks for joining me again in the fun and fascinating antique community here where online meets the real world. Please click the subscribe button below. Click the bell to be notified when new videos upload. Leave a comment below and hit thumbs up to like this video. Links to our online social media daily posts and our items for sale are in the description. This is George at The Antique Nomad. Bye for now.